Hello, this is Rob Hirschfeld, uh, bringing you a digital rebar provisioning Kubernetes uh, video. This is one of a string in a Kubernetes set that we call CRIB, Kubernetes Rebar Integrated Boot, uh, which just uses kubeadm uh, to do the provisioning. Uh, and then we've been enhancing it uh, since we released it last November uh, to include HA, building an SED cluster, building certificates, a certificate authority. There's a lot of, a lot of capabilities added in. My goal here in this video is sort of to show you how to get started. Uh, I'm going to assume that you already know how to use digital rebar, that you know how to build, uh, get machines installed. In this case, I'm doing everything in packet, uh, which we strongly recommend uh, as a starting place for this type of work because you can get machines on the internet very quickly and get full control of them. Um, once you have your packet uh, plugin installed, which I have here, you can put in your API key and then you can literally just create new machines. Uh, so once that's been done, I can come in, I can, had, I can add a machine, and as long as I set the uh, machine plugin parameter, I'll show you exactly what that looks like. To pack it out of PMI, I'm gonna add a fifth machine, video five, um, into my cluster, and we're gonna go ahead and just add that. Uh, when you add uh, using the APL like this, it's going to take a couple seconds to go. So don't, don't worry about it. It's, it's, when it's slow. It actually means it's doing the thing it's supposed to be doing behind the scenes. Um, and it's going to create that, that fifth machine. It's already got its IP address because Packet assigned that right away, but it hasn't been discovered and set up yet. And I'm assuming you've already gone through the process of building the wizard and setting your workflows and doing all those things. And uh, there's some content packages and plugins that need to be done, and I will show you exactly what that looks like. But because of the time it takes to build the cluster, I'm going to jump right into building the cluster. I already have one baked, um, so I have a cluster that we can we can use and show and play with, so we don't have to wait a couple of minutes uh, while the cluster builds. It, it actually is about a five-minute process, so not a lot of time. Uh, if you're interested in following along, everything I'm showing you is uh, Apache open source. And what uh, there are some new things that I've been adding into the UX, and there's a couple new things that are coming through the pipeline. So what I'm showing you is tip content, meaning it's our, our current latest. We haven't done a release that includes all these features yet. So when you're looking at things, choose tip, uh, not the 3.9 version, which is our last stable version. Um, but everything I'm showing you here, the stages, the workflows that we're building are all in Git, and I will show you in a later video how you can fix, contribute, and change to this yourself. It's very exciting, very easy, um, because of the way we've been working on development workflows for digital rebar. So I have a couple of machines. Uh, what I need to do is put them all together into a cluster, uh, and maybe even video five will be ready at that point. What that, what that means is I need to create a profile here for this crib demo. I'm going to call it video. And to make things really simple is we start with this example um, profile. Uh, you don't have to create HA clusters. As a matter of fact, I would, I would recommend against it um, for right now. Let's see. So what I want to do is I'm going to make a clone of this. This one's read-only, so I can't use that one. Uh, it's just for example. So I'm going to clone it. I'm going to call it the video um, cluster, and we're going to call it Rob's demo, and we will call it video. So this this name has to match the name of our uh, profile. So if I'm calling a video, these two items have to be video. Um, unless I want to reuse or split the Etsy clusters. It's one of the things that we allow you to do. In this case, I'm keeping things very simple. And then I want to name, and this, uh, because I already have an Etsy cluster and certificates, I'm actually going to name my Etsy uh, cluster. Let's see. So these are all the parameters. There's a ton of different parameters that you can set. Most of these are going to be set for you automatically unless you want to start messing with the servers. Uh, it's going to assume one and development mode, and that's a really good place to start uh, until you get brave and st really start understanding how things are done. I'm going to name this uh, etcd cluster video also. That way the certificates that are generated are going to match. Uh, and then I want to make this red so we can find it super easily, and I'm going to give it a leaf to make it a little bit more distinctive. And from that point, I now have this red video uh, Kubernetes cluster. 
going to take the machines that I've provisioned and so this one's already in sledgehammer weight so it's gone through the full provisioning workflow and I'm going to add all of them into this profile so now these machines are in this profile and then to get things started all I have to do is come in and uh, start a crib live cluster so crib live cluster is going to build in sledgehammer you don't have to do any additional operating system environment it just goes straight into sledgehammer you can build all those together so it just goes straight through uh, instead of this two-step uh, process or you can install an operating system and then install Kubernetes on top of it. That's what crib install cluster does. I'll show you both those workflows. But basically I'm going to pick this workflow and then I'm going to initiate the operation. And at this point it's going to run through and install Kubernetes. Uh, first it's going to mount the local disks and do all those things. And one of the things that we've, we've done is we've made it set icon. So you'll actually get in the machines, you'll find out which one's elected the master. Uh, so in this case, crib1 was actually elected the leader, uh, and it has a different icon, so we can, we can find it easily in the system. And I'll show you what that looks like in a moment. But it's going through and, and doing its thing here. What's going on for this is our workflows view. And in this case, what we have is discover is our normal, uh, and you need this if you're going to build and run this type of environment. So you have to have a discover workflow. It discovers, it does packet discover. So it's in packet. So that creates all the metadata associated with packet, um, which is quite a bit. Um, it's ID, it's project ID, it's type, things like that. And you can clone and create machines uh, that are identical. I'll show you what that looks like in a second. Um, and then I just go into sledgehammer wait, which is the state that we are waiting. The cluster we just kicked off, and I'm going to click here so we can trace through on the right, um, is pretty straightforward. It, it puts on SSH keys. It's going to mount the local disks, so we install Kubernetes to the local disks. Then I'm going to install Docker. Then I'm going to install Kubernetes, which is really just installing the components, so app get install or yum install. And then I'm going to create my CD cluster, which is also going to build all the certificates that I need for the infrastructure. Uh, then I'm going to go through kube, crib config, which runs kubeadm, and then I'm going to I'm done. I'm going to wait, um, and that's the process I just kicked off. What that's doing is it's stuffing that information back into this profile I built. So uh, we're not very far along yet, so it hasn't built any of those. Um, and if I wanted to dig into what one of the stages look like, uh, we can pick an interesting one like crib config. Crib config has two different tasks in it, one of them that elects the masters and then the other one that actually runs kubeadm. And then in this case, that file then decomposes into two different templates. And if you're like, oh, it's, there's a big tree, it's really not that big of a tree. Everything um, is nested because we want to encourage reuse. Um, and so there, we do have a, a, degree of, a high degree of reuse here. But what you'll find in the templates is it's just uh, some bash golang. This is golang templating uh, and bash. Uh, so in this case, this is actually pretty straightforward. It's just running. Um, oh, this is actually building the kubeadm config file. The uh, file here, sorry, I kept clicking on the wrong one. Uh, this is the bash. So you can use the templating to build the config files or um, in this case, we'll figure out the elections and things like that. If you're, you're having trouble reading it, don't try and read it here. Uh, all of this is actually in Git in the, in the tree here. So uh, my templates here, if I want to see what's going on with crib config, uh, I can read it very easily right here. Um, and you'll see this is where we handle some of the, uh, the Golang templating and pick up different uh, components of the system. So with that in mind, let's see if we're making any progress with our uh, profile. So this is the same profile. You'll see I've made it through a significant amount of uh, my process. So I've gotten my uh, CA name. I've gotten CAs built. I can expand this. This is this, the password. And as I'm going, you know, I'm getting live updates. So uh, different machines have been elected to the master, the cluster. Here's my NCD servers. Um, and I can see what's going on with them. So this is literally building things. Uh, this is not a, VI, a VIP, by the way. This is just the external address of the machine. If you're building an HA cluster, which 
this code will do and you supply a VIP, it will create a um, HIA load balancer and distribute the load upon the among systems. Once again, advanced function. Um, but the capabilities there, by default, it's just going to build a single, single master system. Uh, okay, so this is moving along pretty briskly. Let's check in on it and see what's going on. Uh, oh, we're now at crib config. I can click over here and actually watch it running the script. So this is the process. We still have uh, full debug logging turned on. And I can get live updates. So as this process goes, in this case, it's waiting for the nodes to come up. Uh, so it's doing a get nodes and waiting uh, until all of the pieces and parts that are necessary have been spun in uh, to the system. And it's just going through that sleep loop. Back over here, uh, that'll wait. So video one was uh, elected my master, and then I have five other nodes in my cluster. And it's, it's pretty much done. So in the time it's taken me to explain the basics to you, uh, I have completely built a Kubernetes, uh, Kubernetes cluster. Um, pretty fun from that perspective and so that means we, we got a little bit of time in this video for me to, to show you something I'm gonna go and, and do the other cluster in this case um, the one that's already built so so we don't have to wait around so profiles here I have a crib cluster uh, this one's already got it you'll notice the things that are different here is the uh, the, the admin uh, Sorry, our join command, this is just a kubeadm, running the join command with the token uh, and sharing the information. So this is literally the command that's being run. It's just exercising kubeadm, but in a completely autonomous way. You don't have to pick the master. You don't have to figure out IP addresses or names or uh, CA certs. All that stuff is, is built in and done for you. Uh, and it also generates the admin comp file. And so if I have this on my local system, I can run kube kube cuddle and attach to the, the system. And we've made that convenient also. So I have a file here. I'm going to save, uh, I'm going to take this link and save it. And I'm going to save it into uh, my digital rebar. That's not what I want at all. I'm going to take my link and save it in uh, normally I just go to downloads, but I want to go into digital rebar. Uh, provision, I already have this provision content, crib, that's where I am right now, and we're going to just call it admin.conf, it's handy. So over here I have a uh, browser window, and if I cat admin.conf, this is the file I just saved, that's handy. And then you don't have to remember how to type anything, we got that right here. So actually take the text, not the link paste here and I'm gonna uh, get nodes so uh, the admin comp file has the address of the cluster it has my tokens and security and all those other things so with that I'm actually completely good to go uh, with my kubernetes cluster um, easy to download now I can also get that same information using DRP CLI uh, in this case I have my machines list uh, I'm gonna pipe I'm gonna cheat and use JQ so I only get the names of the machines. So this is all the machines I have in that cluster. Uh, so, so in this case, I have DRP CLI already set up to run to the system. I can say DRP CLI uh, profiles uh, show me the crib profile which will show me everything in crib, which is handy because the file's there, but it's not really what I want. What I actually want to do is make it so you can see it. And then I want to get the params. Uh, P-A-R-A-M-S, params for crib. Um, and what I, what I want is I want to get this admin comp file. So right here, yay. And then I'm going to get that profile. So that will get uh, the profile. Whoops, if I actually type in the commands correctly, of course. Let's uh, see. Yay, some tutorial on, uh, oh, sorry. 
some tutorial on how to use the CLI correctly. So if I go look at profiles, I will I want the params, gets all the parameters. So profiles params. And then that's going to get my ID and then Jason should be the name of the Oh, I don't need to get. That doesn't make sense. So some of the people are reading this screen and saying, Rob, just do this. I just want to get the parameter. Get ID parameter. There you go. So now I have the admin comp file. So now if I wanted to, I could pipe this into uh, second. I'll just I'll call it video.conf. It's very exciting and then I go jump back to my coupe cuddle config and now I'm gonna say video so I'm showing it to you this way because um, CLI and API is really important to us uh, and if you were gonna downstream take action in that cluster you would want to use this command you wouldn't want to do it from the UX some people are like ah oh, Rob you always show us the UX I'm like yeah the UX is handy for a video um, CLI demos are not particularly exciting because they don't, they don't show you all this context. Um, anyway, uh, so in this case, we've, we've gone through uh, the system. There are errors. So you get to see me troubleshoot a little bit. And so in this case, I can go back through. This is that live log. Um, and it's telling me um, that there was an error. It looks like Kubernetes master initialize successfully and then we have some other issues and so this is this is probably working actually fine you can join ma machines and do all sorts of stuff and one, one of my options here is to just come back uh, this is still under development you can see it did figure out the master it just didn't take a final step and I can just set things runnable uh, kube ADM does not uh, necessarily appreciate um, having things rerun and so that can cause some problems so you, you would need to troubleshoot what had happened and look it up. And I'll do a separate video that shows you what it looks like to actually do this test cycle uh, on the system. I'll, I'll leave this one in place. Uh, but before that, I do want to show you what it would look like if I was going to reset the environments and um, wanted to do this as a second test, because this is one of the other common, com common challenges that, that you're going to encounter with this, is that you're going to say, this was fun. Get, do, it, do it again, Rob. And so in those cases, what I can do is I'm going to go ahead and take my uh, second, my working cluster and say I'm, I'm ready to, to make a tweak and, and change my logic and re regen it. Uh, what we've been adding is a crib reset cluster uh, and crib reset cluster. And I'll, I'll tell you exactly what it's going to do. Um, it's going to go, but it, it's going to go through and wipe out the per, that profile. So all of that extra information that got set in that profile as we went is um, problematic and so it's it's going to keep us from actually doing the work we need to do so in this case it's clearing a whole bunch of things and it's telling me oh wait a second i have to actually clear the root ca myself oops that's not what i meant to do clear the root ca myself um, right this is a privileged operation the machines can't do this <laughs> you have to do it um, i'm sure greg's going to figure out some some cool way to to fix that but Basically, what I, I'm doing here is I'm just clearing out my certificate routes. I'm going to go back over here, take these machines, and say, ah, okay, um, let me try again. I'm going to rerun them, and they will go through. And you can see now they're now they're succeeding in that process. So now I've gotten the machines cleared out. That's not enough. Um, I also have to re uh, reboot them. So I'm setting them back to discover to let them be rediscovered. And I'm going to power cycle them, which I can do using the packet API. And now I have to wait a little while while they reboot. Uh, and then I'd be ready as soon as they come back in and check in and they're sledgehammer ready, I can put them straight into the process. <coughs> Excuse me. Or I could build a new workflow that combines Discover and uh, Crib Live Deploy and just go straight all the way through. And so that's pretty much the process. Let me show you what what crib looks like now that I've gotten it cleaned back out. So now it's just 
back down to the standard crib cluster with just those two profiles. So if you remember, I had all the, the values set. Those had been populated while the system was going, and I had my, my uh, admin comp file and things like that. All that's gone. Um, and now we're back to the system. I do have one bonus thing to show you as a, as a fun little piece of functionality. Uh, I can take this machine, and if I want to make a fourth machine in this case, um, by the way, this is TF as in Terraform, so these machines, there's actually a Terraform version that will build the profile and the workflow and add the machines and do all this work for you. Um, but if I just want to copy a machine that's already there, I have to remove its address, uh, and then I want to take out some of these uh, values that have been set. Here's GoI. Uh, that'll just get overwritten. Here's the, the packet plugin IPMI that I need. And then these are the values that uh, are for the machine. The only one I need to remove here is the machine UID, which is uh, not going to be for the clone machine. All these other things are actually the things that I need, and the SOS string is going to be also. Um, and then I can actually add this server in. And now I've actually cloned my machine and packet. Um, same, you know, or I could have given a different cl uh, classification with the API. Uh, and it's going to go through and build a machine and add it. Um, one thing to note here is that it's not in the cluster uh, because, oh, it is in the cluster because I cloned it. So it's in the profile. If I just add a new machine, I have to remember to put it in the profile. So an advantage with cloning is that you get this process. Um, cool. And then that's uh, crib for you. Please, 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 uh, this is an open source project. We very much want uh, community help around this. We will accept and review pull requests around the crib pieces uh, and the digital rebar provision docu uh, documentation is integrated into digital rebar provision. So in doc, there is a crib component here uh, and we're gonna be working on updating and expanding this documentation to um, match what I've been showing you in the video. Um, and please, uh, help us get this documented, add in tips and tricks and things that you've discovered along the way. Um, we are very excited about this functionality and, and we, we really hope that you'll participate in making it better. Thanks a lot. This has been Rob Hirschfeld giving a Digital Rebar Kubernetes Integrated Bootstrap uh, demo.